Hello, in this tutorial we are going to learn how to serve an image from the ASP32 which will be running an HTTP server. As target board I'm going to be using an ASP32 Fire Beetle from DFRobot. So, we are going to serve the image from the SPIFS file system of the ASP32. In order for us to have available the image uh, in the file system beforehand, before running the code, uh, we are going to make use of the Arduino VDA plugin covered in the previous tutorial. I'm going to leave the link in the description. Uh, so where we learn how to do this upload, this manual upload of the of content to the SPIFS file system of the SP32, so we don't have to develop a program just for, for that effect. So this is very practical because when we run our code, then we already have all the resources we need um, in the SPIFS file system. So basically the video that I'm going to share uh, shows the basics on, on how to do it uh, but basically what we need to do is after installing uh, that plugin we, uh, we are going to have here under the tools menu uh, this option ASP32 sketch data upload which will allow us to do the upload uh, of the content in our case an image uh, to the file system to the SPIFS file system of the SP32 so in order to prepare things for the upload and I've already done this beforehand and I've already uploaded the image to my device because it takes a while but basically we need to open the sketch folder so uh, the folder of our Arduino sketch and as you can see here usually uh, when we when we open it for the first time it doesn't have this data folder so it just have the .inu file but basically then we need to create a folder called data like I have here and then we simply place inside the data we want to upload uh, to our device uh, in my case I have this file called test it is a, a jpg file I can show it just uh, a very simple image uh, that I've created in Pint just, just for testing purposes and basically uh, after we have this ready we simply need to, to click here in the tools menu and click this ASP32 sketch data upload and then the, the uploading procedure will begin and at the end we'll have the image available in the file system so we can later serve it uh, in our code just let me go back here to uh, the sketch folder obviously you can use uh, other image if you want uh, image that, that you want uh, but basically we need to be careful about something because when we are uh, at least in my case since I'm on Windows um, the operating system uh, will say that this is a, J a JPEG file but the actual extension is .jpg and when this gets uploaded to the SP32 uh, we need to use the correct extension to fetch the file from the file system and it should be .jpg and not .jpeg so this is a common mistake uh, when working with this type of, of extension uh, we usually try to get it or many times we, we may try to get it with a .jpeg extension but it's a actually .jpg so assuming that uh, after this point uh, you have already uploaded the image to your file system now we are going to focus on the actual code uh, of the SP32 so basically we are going to set up a very simple HTTP web server using the sync web server libraries that we have also covered in previous tutorials uh, and then we are going to set up a route that will be serving the image so but to get started we are going to analyze the code from the beginning very quickly the initial part because it's something that we have already seen in previous tutorials but basically we'll need the wifi.edge library so we can connect the sp32 to a wi-fi network then we're going to need the spiffs.edge library uh, which basically will allow us to interact with the spiffs, the spiffs file system of the sp32 it will make available uh, an object called spiffs uh, that we are going to pass to the to the http uh, web server framework and under the hood will be used to fetch the file we want to serve and then we need this ASP async web server dot edge library which basically exposes to us all the functionalities we need to set up uh, the HTTP server then since we are going to connect the, the SP32 to a uh, Wi-Fi network we'll need the credentials of that network namely the SSID uh, which corresponds to the network name and the password then we are going to need an object of uh, this class a sync web server that we'll basically use to set up the routes on our server Note that the constructor of this class receives as input the port where the server will be listening. We are going to use port 80, which is the default HTTP port. Okay. 
So moving on to the setup function, as usual, uh, we start by opening a serial connection so we can output some results from our program. And then we are going to mount the SPIFS file system uh, and we always need to mount it before we try to interact with it. And if it fails, we are just going to return because there's no point in trying to proceed if we cannot uh, use the SPIFS file system. Then we are going to establish a connection of the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network and we are going to print a local IP at the end so the client, which in our case will be a web browser, uh, can reach the server. Then we are going to set up a route um, by calling this on method on our server object and basically this is what we have been covering in a lot of previous tutorials. So the first argument that we pass to this on method is the name of the route, uh, the endpoint that, that will be listening to the requests, and we are going to call it slash image, because we are going to be serving an image. Obviously, you can call it wherever you want. Uh, in terms of methods that it supports, HTTP methods, uh, we'll just consider HTTP get methods, because the client will be fetching an image. And then we are going to uh, write our uh, route handling function using the C++ Lambda syntax for a, a shorter syntax. We don't need to declare a named function. And basically, uh, in the implementation of this function, we are going to send back the file, uh, in our case, an image to the client. So we do this by calling the send method on our async web server request uh, object. Recall that we receive a pointer uh, to this object, which is why we use this operator to call the send method. And basically, this will allow us, this send method will allow us to send an image back to the client. This method is overloaded. It has many, many versions. And the one we are going to use here basically allows us to specify a, a file uh, in our file system and serve it. So the first thing this receives as input uh, is this PIFS object, uh, which is uh, uh, extends, inherited, inherits from the file system class, but basically it represents an object that allows the framework, the HTTP web server framework to interact with a file system, and in our particular case, the SPIFS file system, but taking in consideration that, uh, for example, the SP32 also supports the FAT file system. But in our case, we are, uh, we are using the SPIFS one. So we pass this SPIFS object. Then a second argument, we will pass uh, the, the path to the file uh, that we want to serve uh, the path to the file in the SPIFS file system. And basically, since we have uploaded our image uh, in the root of the data folder uh, in the previous step when we, we are uploading this using the Arduino VDA plugin. So since it was on the base or, or it was directly on the data folder, on the root of the data folder, it means that the file will be created also on the root of the SPIFS file system. And basically it keeps the same name that the file had, which is test.jpg. As I've mentioned, taking in consideration that the extension that we should use is .jpg and not uh, .jpg. And then, uh, as a third and last uh, argument of the send method, we should pass the content type that will be returned to the client. And in our case, it's an image uh, in JPEG format. Here, for example, as uh, since we are serving a JPEG image, uh, in this case, in the content type, it should be JPEG and not just JPG. So. This is it. With this, this uh, we have configured our route to serve uh, a file in the file system. So basically, like we've seen in a previous tutorial where we served HTML, uh, the procedure was pretty much the same. We passed the, the spiffs object, the name of the, the, the path of the file, and then typically what we need to adapt is the content type because different types of files will have different content type and we want the browser to know how to interpret it. In our case, it's a JPEG image. Then, after uh, we finish uh, configuring the routes, and in our case it's just a route, our server just has a single route, we call the begin method on our server object, and from this point onward it should be listening to incoming HTTP requests from clients, and then we don't need to do anything in our Arduino loop, because this is an asynchronous framework, which means uh, that we don't need to periodically pull an object to handle uh, incoming connections. So, let me just open here the, the, the serial monitor. I've already uploaded, as I've said before, I've already uploaded the file to the SPIFS file system of my SP32, and I'm already running the code. So, as you can see here, as expected, it printed uh, the IP address that was assigned to my device on my Wi-Fi network. So, this is the uh, IP that we need to reach in order, uh, that we need to use uh, from a client in order to reach the server.
So in our case, we are going to use a web browser. I'm going to be using Chrome. And as you can see here, basically this is the same IP address and this is the endpoint that we have configured on the server and basically it is serving an image. I'm going to try it again and as you can see here, I'm going to put it in another tab so we can see it from scratch. So, and as you can see here, it is returning the image that we have defined. So this is it. It's very simple to serve an image from the SPIFS file system of the SP32. The procedure is very generic, like we would do for any other type of file. And basically, this opens up some more possibilities of the type of content we can serve. Obviously, you need to take in consideration that the SP32 is a re uh, resource limited device. Uh, so uh, the number of images and the size of images it can serve uh, is obviously limited to uh, its capacity. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial.